Hello, welcome to Anatomy Daha series. Today's topic is Lymph Nodes of the Axilla. The diagram based upper limb lecture. It includes practice questions at the end. Text slides from 2nd to 11. Question slide, slide 14. Color code of the text. The basic anatomy must know in light yellow in color. Clinical highlights good to know in light red in color. Fine points for the advanced readers in light blue in color. Illustrated, prepared and presented by Dr. Abdul Hamid Abdul Rashid. Lymph nodes of the axilla. Let's see the schematic diagram of the right axilla seen from in front. This is anterior wall of the axilla. This is posterior wall of the axilla. This is medial wall of the axilla. This is base of the axilla. And this is apex of the axilla. This is first right rib. Limb nodes of the axilla. The fibro fatty tissue of the axilla, the armpit, contained about 20 to 30 limb nodes. They are arranged into the following five groups. Number one, an anterior or pectoral group, so just glands. This is the one. There are about three to five nodes in number located behind the pectoralis major muscles of the anterior axillary wall along the lateral thoracic artery, lateral thoracic artery at the lower border of the pectoralis minor muscle. They receive this anterior pectoral group receive limb from the upper half of the trunk anteriorly and the major part of the breast. So these nodes, anterior nodes, receive limb from the upper half of the trunk anteriorly and the major part of the breast. The second, a posterior or subscapular group. Let's see the diagram again. This is anterior view of the right axilla, anterior wall, posterior wall, medial wall, flow of the right axilla, and this is the apex of the right axilla. A posterior or subscapular group, this is the one. It includes about six to seven nodes in number located on the posterior wall of the axilla along the subscapular vessels. This is the subscapular vessels. These nodes receive lymph from the upper half posteriorly and the axillary tail of the breast. Three. A lateral or humeral group. You can see the diagram again. This is right axilla. This is base of the right axilla. This is posterior wall. This is medial wall. This is apex of the right axilla. This is right axillary artery. Parallel and medial to the right axillary artery is the right axillary vein going back here. The lateral group that is humeral group of the axilla consists of about four to six nodes along the posteromedial to the axillary vein. So this lateral group is medial to the axillary vein. They receive most of the lymph 
from the upper limb coming from here. Group of axillary limb nodes, central group. Now we are showing the axilla horizontal section, right axilla. This is anterior wall, this is posterior wall, this is middle wall of the right axilla. This is a cavity of the axilla filled with fibro fatty tissue. The central group of the axilla consists of three to four lymph nodes, large lymph nodes, located in the fatty fibro tissue in the axilla. They receive lymph from the anterior, posterior, and lateral groups of the axilla. So central group receives earlier three groups, lymph from earlier three groups. They are anterior, posterior, and lateral groups. This is a central group. Fifth group is the apical group. This is the apex of the right axilla lying behind the clavicle. So this is the apex. The apical group consists of six to eight lymph nodes located at the apex of the axilla immediately behind the clavicle. It is most superior group. It receives lymph from all other groups. In addition, they receive lymphatic vessels that accompany the deltopectoral nodes coming from here between the deltoid and pectoral muscles, as well as vessels that drain the superior region of the mammary gland, the interpectoral nodes. Levels of the axillary limb nodes. Clinicians and pathologists often define metastatic axillary nodes spread simply into three levels. Level 1 Limb nodes located inferior to the pectoralis minor muscle. They are lateral, anterior, and posterior limb nodes. Level 2 Limb nodes located behind, that is deep to the pectoralis minor muscle, that is central interpectoral nodes of rota. Level 3, lymph nodes located above the pectoralis minor muscles, that is the apical nodes, that is more the advance of metastatic, higher the level of the lymph nodes. Intercostal brachial nerve. Inter means between, costal means rib, intercostal means between the ribs, brachial means arm. The spinal nerve between the ribs is intercostal nerve. We have two diagrams in this slide, diagram A and diagram B. This is intercostal nerve. Intercostal nerves give lateral branch. Usually, lateral branch of the intercostal nerve divides into anterior and posterior branches. See diagram B. However, the lateral branch of the second intercostal nerve, T2, doesn't follow the rules. It gives lateral branch but it doesn't divide into anterior or posterior branches like other intercostal nerve. This is axilla. This is medial wall of the axilla formed by serratus anterior muscle. The lateral branch of the second intercostal nerve, T2, passes through the medial wall, that is the serratus anterior muscles go through the axilla and comes towards the upper part of the arm. 
This lateral branch of the second intercostal nerve will supply the skin of the flow of the axilla and also skins of the upper half of the arm that is medial surface and posterior surface of the skin of the upper part of the arm and it is called intercostal brachial nerve. The lymphatic system Tissue fluid, that is intercellular fluid, bathes the cell and fibers of the tissues of the body. It resembles blood plasma in chemical compositions. From this fluid, the cells and fibers get nutritive materials. Into this fluid, they release their waste products and through this fluid, the cells respire. At the arterial end of the capillary, the hydrostatic pressure of the blood is higher than its osmotic pressure and fluid passes into the tissue. However, at the venous end of the capillary, the hydrostatic pressure of the blood is lower than its osmotic pressure and the greater part of the tissue fluid returns to the blood. The remaining tissue fluid left with the tissue started accumulating and a system is needed to drain this fluid back. The lymphatic system consists of lymph, a clear fluid, lymphatic vessels, the vessels that convey the lymph, and lymphatic tissue the structures and organs which contain lymphoid tissue. The lymph capillaries originate throughout the body, but not in avascular tissues, the central nervous system, the splenic pulp, and bone marrow. Lymph from the entire body, except the upper right quadrant, drains into the thoracic duct on the left side, which drains into the left subclavian vein at the left internal jugular vein. Lymph from the upper right quadrant, that is right half of head and neck, right half of the thorax and right upper limb, empties into the right side. From there, through right lymphatic duct and then into the right subclavian vein. Efferent outlet of the lymph. Let's see a pair of diagram. This is right and this is left. This is right internal jugular vein drained into the right subclavian vein. This is left internal jugular vein drained into the left subclavian vein. The highest axillary lymphatic groups, that is apical axillary lymphatic groups, the final groups are drained by subclavian lymph trunk through the apex of the axilla into the right lymphatic duct on the right side A, right lymphatic duct on the right side A, and into the thoracic duct on the left side by the thoracic duct B. Each duct drains into the respective venous junction between the internal jugular vein and subclavian vein, that is jugulo subclavian venous channels, A on the right side and B on the left side. Clinical highlights. The lymph node, which initially receives lymphatic drainage from an area of the breast, which is the site of a pathological process, is termed a sentinel node. This is usually a level 1, occasionally a level 2, and sometimes an extra axillary node, such as parasternal node. The enlargement of the limb nodes is called lymph adenopathy. 
cancers of the breast cause painless enlargements of the axillary lymph nodes. Painful enlargement is due to any infective focus in the area of the drainage of the axillary lymph nodes. The nodes are also enlarged in generalized lymph adenopathy due to other causes like Hodgkin's lymphoma. The intercostal brachial nerve crosses the axilla between the central nodes and when this node is enlarged, they press the nerve and produce pain on the medial surface of the upper part of the arm, the area supplied by the nerve. It is a sign of metastasis to the central node. Palpations of the axillary limb nodes. For palpations of the axillary limb nodes in a patient, the examiner may use his or her right hand for the left axilla and left hand for the right axilla of the patient. The examiner supports the arm of the patient in a slightly abducted position to relax the flow of the walls of the axilla. The anterior, central, apical and lateral nodes can be palpated from standing in front and the posterior nodes can be palpated standing from behind the patient. Practice questions. Where are the axillary limb nodes located? Generally, how many are they and how are they arranged? Describe each group of the axillary limb node, location and from where they received the lymph. Describe the levels of the axillary limb nodes. What is intercostal brachial nerve? Give its clinical highlights. Briefly describe the lymphatic system. Hydrostatic and osmotic pressures at the arterial end and venous ends. Describe the outlet of the lymph on each side of the body. Give clinical highlights of the lymphatic system. The end. Please see related topics. The axilla, brachial plexus 1, brachial plexus 2, axillary blood vessels, axillary limb nodes in Anatomy Daha series. Please subscribe. Illustrated, prepared and presented by Dr. Abdul Hamid Abdul Rashid. Thank you for watching.